Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be taking another look at the IBM ThinkPad R50e that I acquired earlier this year. If you haven't seen that video it'll be up in the cards if you want to go check it out. And I found this at a thrift store and I was really interested because it appeared to have come all the way from Singapore because on the very bottom there was a sticker that said Lenovo Singapore. So the original title of that video was the Singaporean IBM ThinkPad. And a lot of you guys pointed out that this ThinkPad actually comes from Taiwan because of the keyboard layout. Uh, some of you guys said that there are some keys on this keyboard that would only, or some symbols rather, on this keyboard that would only be used in Taiwan. So I updated the title for that video, and uh, here we are again taking a look at it. So in today's video, we're going to be restoring this laptop, reinstalling Windows XP on it, as well as all of the drivers for the chipset, the video card, the wireless card, etc., and just yeah, getting this thing back to the way it was when it was initially sold. I also spent a decent amount of time cleaning this laptop. Now this thing is in pretty good condition as I mentioned in the previous video but I did uh, clean the exterior of it but I spent most of my time on the keyboard because the keyboard there was as is pretty common with laptops and well just keyboards in general when they are heavily used there was a lot of gunk and dirt and, and stuff underneath the keys so I cleaned the top of the keys and then I just started taking off a few keys and cleaning underneath there with a q-tip and with a compressed air can to kind of blow all the air out and then I just ended up taking off all of the keys and really cleaning underneath there and then washing the keys in a colander and just running some water over it with a very light amount of soap and then I laid all of them out and let them dry overnight and then the next morning I snapped all the keys back into place and I have to say it looks much nicer it's amazing what just cleaning the keyboard can do the keyboard looks just much much better you can't see any dirt or anything like that underneath the keys and yeah I'm just really happy with the way it turned out so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna pop in the Windows XP home edition so we're gonna pop in that uh, disk and we're gonna restart the machine here's our IBM ThinkPad startup screen there and we should be prompted yes we're gonna press any key to boot from the CD and we are gonna boot into the Windows XP say so it's been a while since we installed Windows XP on a laptop on this channel. I mean, we've done this many times. I'm sure you guys have seen the XP setup process. You guys are probably pretty familiar with it. But it's been a little while since we did one of these kind of videos and these are kind of fun to do we're going to just press enter here and this is not the ibm restore media because I, unfortunately i don't have that this is just a standard copy of xp home edition but there is a product key on the bottom of the laptop and i verified that that key does work with this copy of xp home edition which is great so it looks like we have, which I'm kind of interested in this here, is there a restore partition already on here? Because there's this partition one IBM preload NTFS, and that's that's about 20, yeah, 20 gigs in size. And then we've got this partition three. I don't know, maybe, let's just restart this here. Maybe there is a, let's just press F3 to quit here. Maybe there is a restore partition on here. We're gonna press the access IBM key to interrupt normal startup. Oh, starting IBM rescue and recovery. Okay, well this is even better. I didn't even realize this was on here. I thought you had to have a restore disk itself, although you may have to have that. This may just ask you for that restore disk. But if this will allow us to just restore the entire OS and, and the computer back to factory settings, then we're gonna go this route for sure. And oh, it's not in English. <laughs> yeah, this did come from Taiwan once again, as I said. So I am going to pull out Google Translate and try to translate some of this. Okay, so I believe this is the screen that we have to be on. I'm looking at Google Translate and it's this screen is saying, restore your system to the previously known state, the location of the backup. So you have to select the location of the backup and this first option is local hard well, Google Translate is saying local hard guarantee. Um, but I I would think this is we're just gonna go with it. I mean I don't know really like I was trying to figure out how to change the, the language and I can't really oh you have to select it in the list. Okay, maybe there's no backup. Maybe you do need to have a 
recovery disk. Yeah, this is asking you to insert a specific disk that I don't have. Google Translate has not been very accurate with this, and I can just show you. I'm gonna take a screenshot here on my phone of what it was of what it is thinking that all of this says. So you can see that it's kind of not um, like 100% accurate because like right here it says rescue and restoration, which that's probably right. Responsibility, edible reduction, and then F then content. This iOS, or is that what that says? No, this iOS. Yeah, it's just not like I've... <laughs> Promote other safe eggs? <laughs> what? Oh my gosh, promote other safe eggs. That has to be like a like a tagline or something. So yeah, what I'm thinking we're gonna have to do is boot back into the, um, to the, like off of the XP, the standard installation CD that I have, because like I said, it appears that we need to have an IBM rescue CD to continue on with this. Okay, so I think I may have figured this out here, not 100% sure, but, this is the Rapid Restore Ultra screen here, and on this side, what it's having you do is it's asking you to choose the source, which I believe, because if you remember from the setup, there were two pretty large partitions. There was like the, the 40 gig or whatever partition that had Windows XP on it. Then there was an IBM branded one, like I said, IBM Recovery that was like 20 or 30 gigs. And I'm thinking that what we're booted into right now sees it as the C drive because there's this recovery folder. The E drive, this I've already verified by going into documents and settings because this has the previous owner's name in there. So this is the, the drive that has all the, or the partition that has all the data on it. So we've got the C drive I've selected the E drive as the destination. It's asking me if I want to delete the documents and settings folder. We'll say yes. I mean, we really have nothing to lose here because we're just going to format this partition anyway if this is going to screw things up. This is asking us if you want to delete a file, which we're going to say, I believe this is yes to all. I mean, I'm just having to use Google Translate to, to verify what all of this says, and it's not really doing a good job because as you just saw earlier, uh, some of these translations are uh, not 100% correct, which is to be expected. So I don't know exactly what that did. That Oh, it's still loading here. It's not responding. That's great. And now we get an error message, which Google Translate uh, thinks it says system cannot find the route which is probably something to do with it. it's not able to find a file specified. Yeah, this is it right here. We've got the E drive, which is IBM preload, and you can see it's 20 gigs in size. We've got the D drive, which is, it just says partition three NTFS. This is the XP partition that we have on the drive that we want to override. And then we have the C drive, which is IBM service, which is probably what we were just booted into. So we're gonna choose drive D here and we're gonna format it using the NTFS file system quickly. Yes, we want to format the drive. So that will leave the two IBM partitions intact. And yeah, if any of you guys understand Chinese and you could read what all those screens were saying, be sure to let me know, or if you would like to translate it, be sure to post a comment down below. That would be much appreciated. Well, here we are, guys. We were able to restart and boot up into this phase of the setup without any issues, which is great. And here are those region and language options. So we're going to just leave it at the default English US, US keyboard layout. The name, we're going to call this Michael. And here is the product key screen. So I have a photo of the certificate of authenticity with the product key. I'm going to put that in. So we'll just leave this. Yeah, the date is not correct. The time's not correct either. It's not 5 a.m. And yeah, we'll just leave this all as the, as the default. Why not? And you know, we can fix it later. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it for now. We are off to the races. And we should be booting into the out-of-box experience, I would think. Yeah, there's this, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but there's this second CD, this copy of Windows XP um, that I had. There's two different CDs. Maybe this second one is a like supplemental disc or something like that. Because XP, oh yeah, PC DOS, what? Oh, that's interesting. So this is a boot menu. And so we've got Microsoft Windows XP Home Edition, Windows XP Professional, and PC DOS. That's very interesting. So this is obviously XP Home Edition that we just installed. This might be the recovery partition, I would think. Okay, so it can't boot off of XP Professional. Windows cannot start because of computer disk hardware configuration problem. PC DOS, I wonder what... 
I wonder what that is. I mean, I, I know what PC DOS is, obviously. I'm sure all of you guys do, but I find it interesting how that's a listing in here. Um, let's see what this is, if we can even boot. PC DOS 7.1 startup menu. Okay, ThinkPad, file not found. Okay, it tries to find command.com. This is the wrong diskette for this ThinkPad, please. So it asks you for a diskette. So this is probably something with... Uh, this is probably something with the, with the recovery production. I mean, I didn't modify any of the IBM stuff. I just got rid of the C drive, uh, or the the partition with Windows XP on it, with all this guy's data. That's the only thing that I uh, formatted. Everything else, um, I mean, those, those two other IBM partitions I, I left intact. And so we don't have the sound driver installed. Uh, that's something we're going to have to install later. So we don't get the wonderful title.wma soundtrack which kind of sucks we're gonna put in our name once again and thank you alt f or finish and there we go so we are now booting into our fresh windows xp home edition installation so our next step is to get all these drivers installed so i'm gonna get started on that we've got a usb drive here with all of the drivers on it that i downloaded i believe it was from thinkpad forms or something or maybe it was i don't think this was from the official website because I'm not, I'm not even sure if ibm hosts these anymore but uh yeah so we've got that drive inserted we're gonna go into my computer and yeah, so that's interesting. Now it shows IBM service and IBM preload in my computer. And it did not do this before. So that's very interesting. A high speed USB device is plugged into a non high speed USB hub. So oh, this is going to be USB 1.0 or 1.1. This is USB 2.0. Yeah, high speed guys, am I right? Uh, we're gonna see, I wonder if there are USB 2.0 ports on here. And I just checked and no, there are not. So we're gonna have to deal with USB 1.0 or 1.1. And my computer is not responding. Isn't that wonderful? That is so great. That's what I've always wanted. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and close out of my computer here. And it looks like it, we closed all of Explorer. Bring up Task Manager, I guess. I have had, like, this has been a occasional problem for whatever reason getting usb drives to work on like fresh installs of xp of course this is service pack one actually we should upgrade this to service pack three first because this is service pack one or no no this is rtm this is not even service pack one so we have to upgrade to service pack two and then the service pack three because you cannot go straight from rtm to service pack three and we may have to burn all these things to a disk because I had to do this before. I forget what computer it was, but I had one computer that was, was not, it was refusing to show the, the USB drive in. You see, I just took it out and now Explorer comes up totally fine. This is like exactly what happened before. I don't remember uh, what computer that it was on, but like, look, I'll, I'll go to my computer here. I can navigate around, do all this stuff, great. And then I put in the USB drive, and now we're gonna try to go to this, oh look, now it's all frozen. Now, now it can't do anything. Now my computer begins to just say not responding. You can see it's got the generic application icon over there. We go into task manager, it's not responding. And if I take it out, it's totally fine. So yeah, it just doesn't know how to handle this, uh, this USB drive. So what we're going to do is I'm going to uh, make a CD with all of the updates on it, as well as Service Pack 2 and Service Pack 3. All right, welcome back, everybody. So we've got a CD right here with all of our needed files on it. We're going to pop it into the drive here. And I think we're going to install the Service Packs first. So we have to start with Service Pack 2 because you cannot go from XPRTM to Service Pack 3. You have to get to Service Pack 2 because uh, you can upgrade from RTM to Service Pack 2 and skip Service Pack 1. Um, and then we'll go to Service Pack 3, and then we will install all the drivers which are in this folder right here. All right, everybody, so we've successfully installed Service Pack 2, and now it's on to Service Pack 3. So both of these are, I mean, they're essentially the same process. It brings up a very similar, almost identical wizard just from the Service Pack 2 being changed to 3. And so we're going to install this and then get on to the drivers. All right, welcome back. So we now have Windows XP Service Pack 3 installed. Just to show you, we can go to run here. Run good old Winver, and you can see here we are, Windows XP 5.1 Service Pack 3. So 
Our next step, as I mentioned before, is we are going to get these drivers installed. So we're gonna go back to our CD drive here, and in this R50E folder, we've got a few executables. Oh, these are actually going to extract. Okay, so that's just extracting. Yeah, so it extracts it to C, which we're not on the C drive right now. We're not on the C partition, we're on the D drive. So it extracts it to this drivers folder by default. All right, so we've got all those extracted. We're in the drivers folder, and we're going to start, we're just gonna start up here. So this is Access IBM. We'll launch the install shield wizard this time we'll actually install it on the system so this yep install shield wizard for access ibm so we'll accept that d program files ibm access ibm perfect that works all right now it may ask us to restart no it doesn't okay that works too uh so this is the audio driver so we're going to go down here to setup and launch this Sound Max setup is preparing the install shield wizard. And this may ask us to restart, but we're just gonna postpone that until we get everything installed and then restart. And yep, as I expect, it's gonna ask us to restart. We're gonna say, no, I will restart later. And we're gonna move on to the display driver. This is definitely important. And get the proper display resolution going here. So we'll accept that. And check that out, we got sound, and we're gonna postpone restarting. And we're gonna move on to our ethernet driver. It's nice that it just puts these all into folders for us. So this, oh, I don't know which, if we have a Pro 100 or Pro 1000. What I basically did is I went to this website, did a control F and searched for this specific model and just downloaded all the drivers for this model. So we'll maybe wait on this until I can verify that. I mean, it's it's not like we're gonna be really be using ethernet on this anyway. I am gonna use just the wireless, which is, I believe this one here. What is this? This is Intel chipset support, okay. All right, we're gonna say no, we'll restart later. Universal device, oh, okay. Okay, this is the ThinkPad modem, and success, okay. So now we will install the wireless driver, installing and or uninstalling the drivers for the Intel Pro wireless adapters, please wait. Because yes, this laptop has not only a built-in modem and ethernet, but also a wireless card, which is extremely useful. I actually forgot that I had this laptop, can you believe that? Uh, I was working on another video, actually, before I started recording this one, and I ran into a couple of roadblocks with that, ended up putting that on the project shelf, the hypothetical uh, project shelf, uh, and I looked and I'm like, oh yeah, I still have this IBM ThinkPad, why don't I get this kind of restored and uh, reinstall XP on it, and that's literally how this video came to fruition. So I think we've installed this driver. Um, I don't see the setup running anymore. Is it in the background? Let's do a control delete and just see here. We'll go to processes. Yeah, it might be done. So what we're gonna do is restart. So we'll go turn off computer and restart because we had like three of those uh, setup wizards ask us to restart when we postponed it. So now we're gonna restart, and when we log back in, well, you can see that we've already got sound, which is nice. We'll be able to increase the resolution and hopefully connect to the internet, which will be pretty cool. So we'll see how that goes. And it looks like the screen resolution may have changed for us, because this does look uh, a little bit larger of a, of a resolution that we're running now. So we can just go to display properties here. And we should see, yep, IBM ThinkPad 1024 by 768 TFT LCD panel on Intel. And there's the whole uh, name of the adapter there. So yeah, pretty cool. So yeah, 1024 by 768 appears to be the highest resolution. Uh, so that's nice. So we'll just cancel out of that. And we, we got sound. You probably heard the XP startup sound. Let's go into control panel and see, I don't see any like wireless anything starting up down here. We've got Extreme Graphics 2 for mobile. So do we not, ha did it not install? I wonder if it didn't install. Let's, uh, oh, there's no Windows key on this. It's kind of annoying. I'm like so used to having a Windows key. So we'll press Control Escape, run MSC, get Device Manager loaded up here. So yeah, Ethernet controller, network controller, USB controller, and unknown device are all, these don't have any drivers installed. Do we have any network adapters? It's got the modem. 
Yeah, it's got the ThinkPad modem. I don't see anything for network, which we we installed this. Like, So we might have to run that again. Uh, let's go back to my computer. I would think we would hear the you know, new new device connected uh, sound like we did with the display driver. It says successfully installed and or uninstalled the drivers for the Intel Pro Wireless Adapter. But like, no you didn't. You <laughs> no you didn't successfully install it, it didn't install. Okay, it says successfully installed. I mean, it doesn't ask us to restart. Well guys, the situation with that wireless card is very interesting. Uh, and it might be something that we have to revisit for another video. Let me just go in here and run. Yeah, it's still showing as not, like, there's no network. I mean, aside from the modem, but there, there's no network ad adapters of any kind installed. So we might have to revisit this. Maybe I downloaded the wrong driver. That could very well be the case. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, I'm sure that it's, it's probably something simple like that. At least I would hope. But... We were able to get Windows XP installed on this thing. We were able to get the display driver and the audio driver and the chipset driver and some of the other software installed, which is pretty awesome. So that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times every single week here on this channel. If you guys have any comments, questions, video suggestions for me, be sure to leave those down below. And as always, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.